per run. Thank you very much, Thar. We're happy to have all of you here as we start off with the Pathless All Bosses run by Sable Dragon Rook. We'd like everyone to know that we have a $5 incentive for Pet the Bird. Every donation of $5, Sable will in fact pet the bird. So now without further ado, we'll get this marathon started and I will turn it over to Sable. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Sable Dragon Rook. You can call me Sable. And uh, this is going to be the Pathless All Bosses. I'm not going to hold us up too much on this title screen. So as long as we are ready with the timer, uh, timing is going to start as soon as I hit yes here. So I will give you a countdown. We are going to start in three, two, one, go. So hello, hello. This is The Pathless. It is a game that came out, I want to say it was December 8th. 2020 very recently regardless um so it's kind of i think flown under the radar for a lot of people uh, if you have not seen it before i think that you're in for a treat then again i'm a little biased but uh and as mentioned we do have an incentive to pet the bird we obviously have not met the bird yet give that about 10 minutes and uh, he will join our journey in the meantime we are heading to this island with the floating island in the sky. We are this pilgrim in the boat. And we have heard that there are gods that live here. And maybe they're not doing good. Maybe something has happened. Or maybe they're sick. We're not really sure. But we're coming here to investigate. And just kind of make sure that everything is okay. And as we get onto land here, I will explain a bit about, you know, movement tech and all that sort of stuff that we'll be facing. All right, and off we go. So for right now, it's just me. And I've got a bow. The bow is, oddly, perhaps, my primary means of movement, which is not, you know, what most people think of when they think of movement in a video game. Uh, once we get to the top of this hill, you will see that there are talismans or little floating targets all around the world that I promptly missed. <laughs> if you shoot them, you get... A little speed boost, and the stamina bar at the bottom of the screen fills up. So I will be shooting talismans as quickly and as often as possible to keep my stamina fully charged and to continuously get these speed boosts. And so here we encounter our first bird. Not the bird uh, that we can pet, but distantly related. And she's not feeling so good. She's supposed to be blue. She's red. She's saying, hey, you know, I'm sick. And this tower over here is causing it. It's it's outputting all of this cursed energy. Can you please just take this key that I'm going to give you and go turn that thing off? And I'm like, yeah, of course. I mean, you're, you're a nice, awesome bird. Of course I'll turn it off for you. And in essence, that is what the game is. We will be going from area to area, encountering these gods. She is one. And they're going to be sick, and they're going to say, please help me. We'll get these keys or sigils, like she just gave me. And we'll turn off towers to help to purify them, to return them to, you know, the way that they're supposed to be. This visor that I'm getting is almost essentially useless for the speedrun, but for a casual player, it's fantastic. If I put it over my eyes, you'll see, like over there, I can see a tower, even though there is a wall in the way. It also lets me pass through those spooky blue walls. So we've got our magic visor that we're basically never going to use because we can't run when we're wearing it. And running is kind of an important part of a speedrun. It's even in the name, in fact. But every now and then we might have an occasion to use the visor to make, you know, those blue walls disappear for a minute. So as you can see, shooting, always be shooting is the motto of this run. And we are solving puzzles to keep getting these sigils or these keys that turn off the towers. The puzzles will naturally get a little bit more difficult as we go on. But for now, this is just kind of a tutorial area.
And each area will, <laughs> will have, excuse me, each area will have three of those towers. So we have turned off one currently. Three is going to be our goal. We do basically have routed, you know, kind of which of these talismans you want to hit on your path. But this game is definitely very variable, which makes it quite a joy to speedrun. Uh, I know that a lot of different runners have a lot of different paths and routes, and you know, they'll route in their favorite puzzles. And it all ends up being, you know, pretty comparable. If you're smart about it, you can take a different route than somebody else and still have a pretty similar time. Because there are a lot of puzzles that we don't solve. Never in my life have I landed directly on top of that thing, but okay. Swag points. One more tower, and then we can get our, our eagle friend down there to be feeling better. So sometimes, as just happened, uh, you'll notice that I hit a tree. Or some other obstacle with my arrow. Uh, it is very important that we're very careful when we shoot arrows. Um, because they are not, you know, magical or anything. They'll hit whatever's in front of them. And if we hit a tree instead of the target, you know, that's a lost little speed boost opportunity. Alright, so we have changed all of these towers back to, if you will, holy energy. Or clean, pure energy. And those are going to return to the god and help to purify the curse that's inside of her. And so that's what you can see in, in you know, her heart. She's got this curse. So now we're gonna go back because we are a pilgrim. We are a very special pilgrim. We came here to help these gods, right? And in our arsenal of things we can do is a purification ritual. So we've got her kind of poised and ready to be fixed up, but it is also still our job to to finish this ritual and help her out. So we're gonna go up here. We're gonna finish off this little purification. And the curse is gone. So she's feeling much better now. She is a tall one. That's the name of the gods in this world. And all of them have those holes in them. That's completely normal. So she's waiting up here. These are all of her children that we see in these statues. She is the mother of all of the other gods that live on this island. So in case you didn't get the impression, that was the bad guy. We are going to be framing our journey around his antics. And as you can see, the god slayer, that, that evil guy who just flew away, 
took our beautifully purified bird and just cursed her again. So he's up on that floating island. That's going to be our end game goal. Our mid game goal is this tower that we currently see. We cannot currently climb the tower. It's surrounded by a, a mist that we cannot enter. So in order to clear that mist, we need to defeat these gods, or the children of this giant eagle that we're currently talking to. There is a fourth god there um, that is... Just, just table that, we'll get to him later. And you can see that little castle on the right hand side, that's going to be basically our end game goal. We need to get to that castle in order to get to the floating island in the sky to confront the god's lair. And that is why this category is called All Bosses, because we must confront each of her children and purify them. So in her place, now that she has faded away, we've got Pickles. His name is Pickles, uh, because that's what I call him. His name is not actually Pickles. But, from here on out, we can now do the $5 donation incentive anytime you want me to pet Pickles. Just uh, shoot $5 our way, and I will give him a good tummy rub, just like this. You get this one on the house. This one's free. And if I pet Pickles for long enough, he will start to glow. So he's my buddy now. He's going to be following me for the rest of this run. And he is actually a very, very important part of our movement tech. So first, we're going to complete what is essentially this tutorial island. And uh, Pickles is going to be teaching me, you know, kind of what he is capable of doing, how he can help me. The first thing he's going to be teaching me is that he can pick heavy things up and help me solve puzzles with them. So I can give him commands by whistling, and I'm going to have him, you know, just carry this over to this pressure plate. So that this, the, the door stays down and we can both walk through. Easy peasy. Now, Pickles, being an AI, you know, can uh, get very confused sometimes. So hopefully we have a cooperative Pickles throughout this run. I will actually take that. That's not a bad place for that to be. Kind of wanted him to chuck it down onto the floor, but he can still see it. So in the end, that's fine. Now, I'd like for Pickles to help me during this puzzle as well, but as you can see, he's very scared. He sees this statue that looks like the God Slayer, and he says, Nope, I'm not going to do anything until you turn this off. <clears throat> so, priority number one whenever we see these statues is going to be to turn them off. I'll use my visor to pass through this wall. If I ever get into a situation where we're around one of these statues and I need Pickles to, to do something for me, he just won't listen until we turn it off, so. For the most part, we avoid these puzzles. We will be doing some of them. Pickles? Oh, hi, buddy! I've never known you to come from that side. Alright, I'm gonna spam the mask just a little bit to make sure we don't glitch out here. If you don't use the mask enough by this point, uh, Pickles like won't be able to learn the thing that he's supposed to learn here. So he's teaching me now that he can carry me. He can pick me up and I'll just fly along with him because he is a very strong burb. Why did I pick the name Pickles? Uh, uh, it was the first thing that came to mind and it just kind of stuck. He was called Flapton Morgan for a while, but I don't know, there's just something about pickles.
All right, so this is the conclusion of the tutorial island. We can now get out into the game proper. Alright, so now we are into, I guess you could say, the, the bulk of the game, right? We will start encountering puzzles where we can get more of these sigils. We're going to be encountering more gods. Those are the bosses of this all bosses category. But first, we have a little detour to take to get these. They're basically like experience chunks. I call them goobers. They will level me up just enough to be able to flap. Flapping is going to be one of our primary means of movement. If I touch down on the ground, I get my flap back. That's only true of the first flap. We will be getting more flaps later. Every time we beat a boss, actually, we will get an additional flap. But for now, we just need the one. And so as you can see, you know, Pickles is, is a very important part of how we navigate this game. It's not just running around and shooting stuff. Although that's a large part of it, for sure. So there are always considerations, right? Do you glide? Do you run? Do you flap? And there's not always one right answer. It kind of depends. It's a very adaptive kind of run. It kind of depends on what's happening at the moment. So this is our first boss. <clears throat> His name is Cernos. Like all the other gods, he is a child of the big eagle that we unfortunately could not save early on in the run. So he will be our first boss. In order to get him to the point where we can actually fight him, we need to, you know, turn off his towers just like we did for the big eagle. Turning off his towers requires these sigils. As you can see, I can't pick this one up until I solve the puzzle. So we're solving puzzles, we're picking up these sigils. Technically, they're called light stones. And once we have collected enough of them and turned off the towers, the boss will become vulnerable, and then we can, we can fight him. I actually chose to miss this on purpose, by the way. I did not want to to shoot that target because it was important that I used it to get up here. I realized that I was aiming for it and so I kind of like just intentionally missed. Now take a look at this cloud over here. This is another very important part of the run that is new now that we're out of the tutorial area. Cernos, the boss, is inside that cloud and all of the bosses here on out are going to be inside that cloud. That cloud moves. That cloud chases me. Getting caught by that cloud is very bad. So he's he's hanging out over there for now, which I'm perfectly fine with because he's out of my way. If he catches me, it will initiate a stealth sequence. Pickles will get blown off of my arm and he'll catch on fire. And I'll have to go and find him while Cernos, or whatever god we're currently dealing with, is stalking me. As I'm sure you can imagine, in any game, a stealth sequence is not the fastest way to do things. So we want to avoid that whenever possible. Will this be a good time Even for donations before just... the boss starts? Sure, that would be great. Alright, we have our first donation of $5.90 from Sanjin saying, Let's go gamers. We have $5 from Arju, Pet the Burb Pretty Please, for our first Pet the Burb incentive. Absolutely. We have $5 from Usurpering saying, GL Sable, pet pickles after the first boss with this humble offering, please, XOXO. <laughs> awesome. We're already on a roll. Thank you so much, everybody. So we've got two pickles pets. I will, as Yuzi requested, I will save one for after the boss. Um, however, once we solve this puzzle, I will cash in that other pickles pet. Very simple puzzle, to be honest. Just 
Got to get Pickles to listen to me a little bit here. He chose the weird way to come down, but that's all right. Here, buddy. All right. Good tummy rubs for the good Pickles. Let's see if I can get him to glow. There we go. Yeah, good job, buddy. So that was a hoop puzzle that we just completed, where you, as you might have guessed, shoot an arrow through some hoops. The number of hoops that you have to shoot through kind of varies depending on which puzzle you're doing at the moment. That one was very simple. It was only one hoop. Don't get much simpler than that. Later on, we'll have to shoot through, you know, three hoops and they'll be like offset to the side of each other and all sorts of things. I see that the cloud is chasing me. Hopefully we can dispel him. Yeah, he left. So yeah, our strategy for getting around the cloud is basically just hope that he doesn't show up. There's nothing we can do to manipulate him into like, you know, going somewhere that's advantageous to us. He's currently over there, uh, which is, is good. If we can get through this entire first area without a reset to the cloud, that would be fantastic. If the cloud is in an area where he's going to catch me, even if we enter the cloud and start the stealth sequence, but intentionally fail, boy, I can't get these today. Um, that will still be slower than simply quitting to the main menu and coming back into the game. So that will be our strat of choice if the cloud happens to be in the way. Because quitting to the main menu makes the cloud move. Sometimes it makes him move just out of the way. And sometimes it makes him move five inches and then you have to reset again and you call him a goober and it's, it's a grand old time. So there's definitely an RNG element, you know, to this run in the form of the cloud. We're currently working on some potentially exciting developments to get the cloud just not to spawn. So that could reduce the RNG quite a lot, but for now, we're not quite there. Alright, so we have purified all of these towers. We have stopped all of the towers from outputting this cursed energy. And now, just like before, they're going to resonate together. And they're going to target the corrupted god. From now on, whenever this happens, this pure energy is going to weaken the god and it's going to reveal his weak points, which are these eyeballs. Now that his eyeballs are exposed, he's like, oh no, I don't like this. I'm vulnerable now, so he's going to run away. And I'm going to chase him. Every boss fight involves a chase where we take out these weak spots. Once we've taken out the weak spots, the boss will be ready to confront directly. And then we will engage them in whatever their particular boss fight looks like. All of the bosses are different. Now you may notice that I don't have a health bar, and that, that is correct. That is a correct observation. I don't have a health bar. I do have a stamina bar, and so any damage that I take throughout any of these chases or boss fights is going to be dealt to my stamina, which doesn't necessarily seem so bad, except that the bosses are very fast, as you can see. He has no problem outpacing me. I need all the stamina that I can get, and so losing stamina to getting hit by the fire or, you know, eventually his fireballs and stuff is, is really not a good thing. It can really slow you down. Alright, take our first shot there on one of his vulnerabilities.
Once I've taken out half of his weaknesses, Saranos happens to have six, he will get faster than me again. There's nothing I can do about that except for just chase him very aggressively. It's also worth noting that, again, even though I don't have a health bar, if I take enough damage, if I take enough hits consistently, uh, it will actually kick me out of the current phase that I'm in and force me to restart it. So even though it's technically impossible for me to die, we certainly do not want to be hit. Or else we're going to risk restarting boss fights and, you know, getting kicked back to the beginning of phases and things like that. Alright, one more. There we go. So the chase is over. I've weakened Saranos enough that I can now face him directly in battle. Because remember, we still need to perform the actual, like, face-to-face -face purification too. And he will always lead with the shockwave and then fireball attack. So we know what to expect there. After that, it becomes a bit more variable. These jumps are always the preferred choice. They don't take as long. I took that hit in an attempt to uh, bait him into a roar, which did technically work, but I didn't get a shot on his eye. It is risky to take hits for the reason I mentioned before. If I take too many, I'll be forced to restart. It will just like completely yeet me out of the arena and the boss fight just restarts. Alright, one more phase. He's almost down. We've taken care of his weak spots once again. I'm gonna bait that slash because he basically never hits me and it's the fastest attack he can do here. And unfortunately for poor Cernos, he kind of just took himself out. So let's get him back to the way that he's supposed to be. The music in this game is so good. It's, it's bold when it needs to be. It takes a lot of influence from, uh, you know, Mongolian culture and similar. So that's what Cernos is supposed to look like, now that he's feeling better. Uh, the person who did the music, Austin Wintery, I want to say. It's by Giant Squid. This game is by Giant Squid, the same people who did Abzu. So Cernos reached into the spirit world, and he got me the spirit arrow. And with that, I can cleanse the rest of his land, you know, bring the sun back. Just help to restore everything. Now that he's feeling better. And that is one of the three bosses gone that we need to take out in order to climb this tower. And we're climbing the tower again because that takes us to the endgame area. That's going to give us access to that castle that lets us go up to the floating island where the Godslayer is. Oh, yeah. 
And if you couldn't guess by the all bosses name of the title, or of the category, there is a way to get to the God Slayer without fighting all the bosses. Uh, you can see kind of on my left over there this big snowy mountain. If you're patient, you can just climb that mountain from the very beginning of the game. It takes you about 15 minutes to climb it. Uh, and then you just end up in the same area where that that tower is going to take us. And so in that way you skip the first three bosses. So that's just the standard any percent that does that. And once I reach this next plateau, I know that I do still have a Pickles pet that was reserved for after the boss. One more talisman. Alright, come here, Pickles. Here is the pet that uh, user you cashed in. Thank you so much. Good job, buddy. There you go. While we're petting Pickles here, we have red. a $5 donation with no message from C1. Just wanted to shout that out. Thank you very much. Awesome. For only $5, you too can pet a Pickles. like those sad animal commercials. What would you do if there was a Pickles right in front of you? You would pet him. That's the answer. The, the cutscene here. It's possible to skip this cutscene. We're not entirely sure how yet. But it has been done. But I want to see it because I want to introduce you to Saro, our next boss. <clears throat> As you can see, he looks a lot different from Cernos. Alright, let's get this wall gone. So the puzzles are going to get a little bit more complex. You know, here we have to take a blind shot through that otherwise invisible wall. That lowered a grate that lets us grab this weight from back here. I'm gonna go ahead and say that it didn't give me credit for that shot. Which is actually a great thing to notice right now, instead of later, when I wonder where the heck my sigil is. That's fine. So you may have noticed, by the way- oh hello Saro, so good to see you. Is this the mood that you're in today? So that's our first encounter with the cloud so far. Uh, you may have noticed, as I was going to say, after the Cernos boss fight, that we actually got a couple gifts from Cernos. One of them was an extra flap, so Pickles can now flap twice. And the other was an extended stamina bar. Our stamina bar is now longer. Very useful. And each of the other gods that we fight are also going to give us gifts like that after we defeat them. Sauro has decided that he is highly invested in all of my business right now, because I'm also happening to go over here and he's right in the way. Yeah, okay. I was gonna try to push it forward, um, toward the place that I wanted to land, but that was getting way too close. My HUD disappeared. 
which indicates that he's like super, super close and about to start the cutscene, so. Let's see how much more he wants to pester us for one day. Currently over there, I don't have much faith that's where he's gonna stay. But yeah, as we were talking about the music earlier, you'll actually notice uh, throughout that there's a lot of Mongolian throat singing, which is really, really cool. That's not something you usually see in soundtracks. Also worth noting, um, it's, it's, I never expected it because I didn't know that this game was coming out until it had already come out, basically. But I've always kind of been a geek about, you know, Mongolian eagle hunters and such. And so it is actually worth noting that the pilgrim that we play as does hold her bow in the standard Mongolian way, not the typical you know, like, Western, what you would find with longbow archers in Europe or whatever. Just cute little attention to detail that really helps to flesh things out. So another deviation that's a bit different from what we've experienced before. You may wonder why I have four sigils, because there's only three towers, right? Starting now, all of the towers require two sigils, or two light stones, in order to turn them off. So we will need to solve more puzzles than ever before, which is fine with me, more time to spend with pickles. Oh boy. <laughs> Hello! He's right here. Alright, I'm gonna try to race him to the top of the tower. If I can beat him to the top of the tower, I can dispel the cloud by purifying the tower before he gets to me. But he's right here. Okay. We made it. Spooky. Oh boy, buddy. Where's the giant tree? Okay. He doesn't usually sit over there, so I like got disoriented for a second. You may also, upon occasion, notice me doing these half charge shots like that. That is called a skill shot or a trick shot. They are very hard to do, naturally, because you know, they're not just the, the full charge things. There is a very tight timing to get it to do that. But the reason that we do them, specifically when we're gliding usually, is because when you charge a bow and you're in the air like this, you drop for the entire time that you charge it. However, if you only have to charge it halfway, you don't drop as far. So skill shots are usually worth it when you're flying so that you can maintain some of your altitude. The negative, of course, is that if you miss a skill shot, which is very easy to do, and I have been missing them not infrequently so far, uh, you just drop the altitude for no reason. You know, because then you didn't even get to hit anything. Let me around. There we go. Okay. So that'll be our fourth sigil. Four sigils. Each tower takes two. We have two towers left, so we are good to go. It's just hitting up the towers, and then we will head to the boss fight. Take I did pet pickles after we beat Cernos, yes. 
We'll take this time to give a shout out to our next incentive coming up, which is to upgrade Bleed 2 Story New Game Plus Normal to increase the difficulty to hard. We're currently at $15.90 out of $25 to upgrade that, so less than $10 away from upgrading our first, uh, from upgrading the next run. Awesome. Yeah, we've got a lot of incentives and all sorts of stuff going on for this event. It's not just, not just pet and pickles. So be sure to check those out. Donate to the ones that tickle your fancy. This will be the final tower that we need before we can begin the boss fight, which is structured sort of in the same way as Theranos. There's going to be a chase and there's going to be a fight. Sauro is very different though, so his fight will look a lot different than Theranos's did. So the chase with Sauro is going to be, I don't necessarily want to call it simpler, but different. Because he only has four weak points. Saranos had six, and later on we will encounter a boss that has eight, so they do vary a bit. That's fewer things to shoot at, and hopefully the faster we can get through this, uh, this chase. How dare there be trees in front of me in a forest? Now one thing I haven't particularly mentioned, okay, <laughs> sure, about these chases, right? As a speedrunner, we run a unique risk that most casual players are not going to run into about actually going too fast. Going too fast, cutting corners. This is a little bit of an on-rail section. That's not to say that it always finishes in the same amount of time. But there is a maximum fastness that you can complete this in. If you kind of butt up against that, you can mess up the camera, actually. And you will lose the ability to move in certain directions. Which can include forward, which is obviously not good. So we do need to be a little bit careful. I will be careful for the sake of the marathon that we don't mess with that if we don't have to. And it can happen in any chase. We're always looking out for that camera inversion glitch. Sauro's fireballs are much harder to dodge than Cernos's were. Cernos just shot like a bunch of them when they were pretty easy to walk around. Sauros has a shockwave and the explosion itself, and it takes up quite a lot of space. And eventually, he's going to be shooting them behind me as well, so I'll still need to dodge the shockwave even if I can't see it anymore. And I was very close but failed there, so that's part of what makes Sauro hard. Thankfully that hit to stamina isn't going to make a difference, because the chase is over. Alright, so now Mr. Spicy Giraffe is going to go and proceed to his main boss battle. And Sauro's boss battle is a lot different than Serenos's. 
He's got fewer vulnerabilities. Overall, he's, you know, weaker in that sense. But in exchange, he's going to have a bit more help from the God Slayer. So we've already taken out his weak points. He put up basically no fight. And he's like, oh boy, you know, this is just not going well. I'm going to need some help. So he's calling out to the God Slayer. Those are statues, just like we've seen before. That means Pickles will not be able to pick me up or anything. And so this boss is a stealth boss. As always, I am going to try to make this in only two stints of hiding, and I never do. But deep in my heart, I want to believe that it's possible, so I try every time. It ends up being just the same as if you would solve it as intended, but... Always gotta try. You're not meant to be able to one cycle that room, but with some careful timing, you can do that. So I got pickles to drag this closer to me, so I had a place to hide. And this went basically exactly as it's supposed to go in speedrun terms. But we're not quite done. Those guys aren't doing so good. Hopefully we'll fare better than that. One last tight little run here. Wow, that shot me back a long way. How aggressive. I've actually never had that happen. Where he shoots you back and then you actually can't make it back to safety. It's alright though. No problemo. We just gotta make that tight little timing and get him knocked down. So now those statues are turned back off. Pickles can glide with me again. Fire tornadoes! Because Spicy Giraffe is upset now. I actually almost got a shot on that eye, which should not have been possible, so that makes me wonder if maybe we could even get a third shot there. Alright, so we've defeated Sauro. We can return him to the way he is supposed to be. And he should feel a lot better. This is a good time for donations. You bet. Well, we have met, we officially met the Bleed 2 story, New Game Plus Normal, uh, increasing the difficulty to hard mode thanks to a $50 donation from Boot disc rev who donated fifty dollars and saying bleed to hard mode let's go good luck on the run jacket so thank you boot disc rev for helping us meet that incentive awesome and did we have any outstanding pickles pets we have not had any outstanding pickles okay. pets yet um but we are but for those that don't know for every five dollar donation with pet the bird in the donation comments sable will stop and pet pickles Because if Pickles is due a pet, I mean, I can't, 
I can't just accidentally forget about it. And for those wondering, the next incentive up on our docket is for the Castlevania Aria of Sorrow run, where we'll go Castlevania Bullet Hell. Two final bosses fought at the same time, and that is an incentive of $25. So if that tickles your fancy, be sure to get those donations in for some Castlevania. All right, so just like before, you know, he, Sorrow gave us a spirit arrow. We cleared up his land, and now he's going to give us some gifts as a thank you for, for purifying him. One of those is going to be an additional flap, like always. And the Strength of Sorrow. Strength of Sorrow is actually very, very good. Uh, some of the boss's boons are more or less helpful than others. Strength of Sorrow is these orange talismans. As you can see, we go heckin' fast when we when we use these orange talismans, so they significantly speed up our movement throughout the rest of the run. They aren't just present in Sauro's area, they will be present everywhere, starting now. So a great gift from him. And we will, in fact, go out of our way to route orange talismans in from here on out, because they give such a significant boost of speed. Wow, that hill just like ate my momentum something fierce. Oh well, that's fine. All right, moving on to the third boss. That will be the final boss required in order to climb the tower. Sauro, for all the more that he was a little bit of a troll at the beginning with the cloud, uh, he actually was not too bad. Nimue, this upcoming boss, not so much. <laughs> she tends to be very, very troublesome when it comes to how often she likes to interfere from within the cloud. So hopefully we can get some good luck on her. A lot of times, a small difference of like whether she spawns directly to my left or you know kind of to my left and a little bit forward is the difference between whether i can reset or whether i can just like outrun her so hopefully she's generous this time and this is a new type of puzzle we'll solve it after we get this cutscene for nimue Basically, it's a it's a pillar. The front of the pillar rotates to show the pictures of the different gods. And there are a bunch of pillars. You have to rotate them all until they all show the correct picture. At this particular point, the answer is literally written on the ground, so it's very simple. But later on, we're going to be solving some of those where you just have to memorize the answer. Um, because the actual solution, if you want to look at it, is a significant distance away. So... But at least for that one, if you get confused, you can always take a peek at the answer on the ground. Alright, we're just gonna have Pickle sit on these real quick. This is kind of a unique puzzle, we don't really see another one like this. I can see Nimue hanging out there in the back, in the cloud. Most commonly, she likes to teleport from where she's currently sitting over to exactly where I'm about to be going, so we'll see if she feels like doing that. Oh, she sure does! I'm so surprised. Nice to see you, girly.
she knows. I swear she knows. And like, I talked to the devs and I was like, what's up with the cloud? And they were like, it's random. But it's like consistently random. You know, like I obviously was able to tell you that that was probably going to happen and then it did. So there's just so much we don't understand about how that works. A hoop puzzle of a slightly different variety. Nimue is currently not here, which surprises me. But I'm not gonna complain about that. And up next, we basically just have a couple, like, really therapeutic puzzles. I really enjoy these ones. It's very satisfying to solve puzzles in this game. They're all very well made. I personally am a fan of the torch puzzles, where I shoot my arrow through torches, and uh, it lights my arrow on fire, so that I can light other things on fire. Really, really like this. Um, but... If you get the impression that you're going to see this entire game just because you're watching this run, that is very much not true. There's a huge amount that we don't do, even in all bosses, which is a rather completionist kind of category. So if this game piques your interest, I highly recommend that you try it out. Because there's so much to discover that we're not even going to come close to talking about here. Alright, so we're gonna head over to this tower, which, thanks to exactly where we just were, and a little bit of strategic lighting, we will not need to ride the rope up in order to activate. Nimue is moving, hopefully not directly onto my face. Kind of onto my face, can you not? And don't forget that we have the $5 pet the bird incentive. It's uh, been a little while since we've, gave, we've given Pickles a pet, so if you would like to see me rub his belly. Five bucks to a good cause, we'll get you that. This black mist around this castle indicates that there's one of those statues that Pickles doesn't like. Oh, perfect shot. It's the best I've ever done that. So basically we cheese that puzzle, right? Because Pickles is supposed to not be able to help me during that. Cause, um, you know, it's a it's a puzzle that he's scared of because of the statue. But if we can glide specifically from that location, we can just glide straight in from the top and land at the solution. Nimue has decided that we shall not pass. Par for the course. That's a little bit of an unusual spot to see her, but... We cool. Alright, we have one more tower after this one, which means we need one more sigil. One more light stone, if you will. She's hanging out pretty close to where that puzzle is going to end up being. We'll see what she decides to do. Hopefully she's far enough away that she just kind of minds her own business. Because the puzzle we want is down here. We can actually use our visor and see that there is a puzzle down there. The visor that we literally never use. And the tower's over there, so we're... We're within reach of finishing up this area. This is also going to be the first puzzle where we encounter mirrors, one of my favorite elements of the puzzles in this speedrun. If I shoot an error at a... an error... If I shoot an error, if I shoot an arrow at a mirror, uh, it will bounce off of it and go sideways. 
That lets me make shots around corners. But I'm gonna need Pickle's help in order to move these mirrors to the appropriate locations. I'm a sucker for any of these puzzles that have these glancing shots. Alright, so Nimue is still minding her own business for now, but she's about due to move. She moves approximately every two minutes. If she appears in front of me, that's bad. If she appears to my left, that's fine. I will just outrun her, hopefully. Maybe she'll do neither. Maybe she'll be very kind. It really doesn't look like she's gonna bother me. Which is actually pretty unusual for her. She really likes to chase you during this final run up to this tower. the drill at this point we're gonna turn these towers on it's gonna reveal her weaknesses we're gonna chase her we're gonna fight her we're gonna make her feel better give her a big old hug i would argue that nimue's fight is the hardest of of the bosses one mistake causes you to revert back to the beginning of the phase so you you need to do it perfectly Of the chases that I have a problem with the uh, the camera glitch occurring in, Nimue's is probably the most common. She can definitely be quite a bit of a troll. So here's hoping that we get some decent luck with her. I did choose to stay off the ground for a while to just prevent her from shooting fireballs at me. She has different, I guess you would say, like, programming, you know, different scripts for what to do if you're in the air versus if you're on the ground. So I did kind of want to stay in the air for a little bit, just to make this run up to her a little easier. I am going to chase her basically as intended, just so, like I said, we can have a little bit of marathon safety and hopefully not get that camera glitch. In my heart, however, I will always be a speedrunner, and I will always cut corners a little bit. Like Saro, she only has four weak points, so as far as the chase goes, that's a little bit simpler. She's a uh, Tokyo drifting a little bit here. But yeah, I will pursue her the intended way around this mountain. Her fireballs are really no big deal. They're just kind of random, except they're not. So, compared to Sauro, compared to the boss after her, like, they're really not a big deal. And in fact, I've already gone fast enough that I'm, I'm ahead of where she's shooting them, so they're not really a problem. Good chase. Right about on pace with normal at that river we take her down. If 
we are extraordinarily lucky, we will skip the entire second phase of her fight. However, that is not really up to me. It's up to the game whether it wants to give it to me or not. So we shall see. I cannot get hit. Getting hit means restarting the phase. So we definitely want to avoid that. If we can help it. She is unironically hard. Like, for realsies. Phase one, no problem. Pickles got nommed a little bit, <laughs> but don't worry, he's okay. He's just trapped now. And she also has way more heads, which is kind of way more problematic. But we did not get the phase skip, so we'll have to do this phase as normal. Which, you know, for me is pretty standard. That's not unusual at all. Oh, a sweep, really? Okay. I fully expected a chase, but I'm not going to complain about that. Alright, we'll take out one of the two things that's holding pickles there. This one should be a chase. There we go. This long spitting fire attack is just like the worst that you can get. So I freed Pickles. Unfortunately, he got flung to the other side of the room, and now the floor is lava. So that's kind of a problem. We gotta make sure we get over there and save him before things get real bad. She's spookier than ever. Alright, we got our buddy here. He's okay. And caca. So that was a very good Nimue fight, despite no phase skip. Um, can definitely be happy with that. And we'll restore her to the way that she's supposed to be now. She's a big ol' schnick. She's a friendly schnick. And like always, she's gonna give us that spirit arrow and, uh, you know, give us the tools that we need to help purify her land. Well, coming off of that boss fight, we actually have $5 from Pickles, who simply says, pet me. <laughs> Gladly, Pickles. Just reminder to everyone in chat, we do have a Pet the Bird incentive for every $5 donated with Pet the Bird or somewhere indicating that in the message we will get to give Pickles some good pets. And that $5 also went towards our current incentive of a Castlevania bullet hell where we'll be fighting two of the final bosses on the screen at the same time. So be sure to get those donations in if that interests you. That sounds like absolute insanity, and I really hope that that, that incentive is met. Yeah, that that's uh, I believe that's my last run of the day for my hosting vlog, and that sounds incredible. It'd be a good way to to close it out for you. Exactly. Alright, so, as usual, we get one flap. 
And the gift that Nimue gives is Un Momento. I gotta pet pickles real quick. Alright. There we go. Very nice, buddy. Gotta get that glow going. Good, good. Alright. So the gift that Nimue gave for that fight was faster recharge of flaps, which is fantastic because we now have four flaps. Can take quite a while to wait for those all to come back. If we didn't have this gift, so... Definitely a, a good thing that we are going to make use of immediately. That tower that we have been aiming for from, from the very beginning of the game is now open to us. We have defeated the three gods that were kind of blocking that off. In true speedrunner fashion, we did the thing, but we're not going to use it. So even though we've been gunning to use this tower the entire time, I'm not actually going to use the tower because it takes a long time. Which is unfortunate because at the top of the tower is the God Slayer. We haven't seen him since the very beginning of the game. Well, I mean, I guess. I guess you've seen him in cutscenes a little bit, but we haven't encountered him since the beginning of the game. And he's just kind of chilling up there. And if we climb the tower, we're going to go up there and he's going to be like, yo, check out my sixth sword. He's got a sword called the Sun Sword. And we're going to be like, dude, not cool, man. Everything you're doing, not cool. And so we're going to fight him, and then we're going to learn that we are horribly underpowered, and that the Sun Sword is way OP, and we have no chance. And it's 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 a battle that you get to like play as, as the player character, and it's really, really fun. But the battle plus the cutscene obviously takes a lot of time. So unfortunately, we are going to skip that by just going out of bounds. We're going to walk past the cutscene trigger. So over on this edge of the mountain is kind of an invisible wall that has a seam in it. And we're just going to fly through the seam to get out of bounds. The talismans are going to be there just because the talismans are kind of generated by what the game considers to be walkable. And since this is walkable, even though it's out of bounds, they're just, you know, auto-generated here. That doesn't mean we're supposed to be here. So if I flap right now, I'm going to get pushed to the left and go back inbounds. So we do not want to do that. This is what any percent looks like. It's like 15 minutes of climbing a mountain like this to skip the first three bosses. But off to the left, you can see there's the top of the tower there and there's where that, uh, that cutscene in the fight and everything would happen. So we have just been given our fast flap recharge skill, which comes in mighty handy for scaling this mountain. And once we are at the top here, we have actually skipped the cutscene trigger. And so that fight and the cutscene will not happen because it all would have happened, you know, down there. And we are able to progress without spending time on it. Which is both cool and sad, because it's a it's an awesome, epic little confrontation. But it does bear, you know, remembering that the God Slayer has that Sun Sword, and that we stand no chance, and that we're going to need to find some way to solve that problem before the end of the game. So we haven't really heard much about the god who lives here. He is the strongest child of the Eagle Mother that we met at the beginning of the game. And he is the one that is locking off the big castle right there that leads to the floating island.
Alright, so Kumo is hanging out. Kumo can be a troll. He's a little bit different from, from the other gods in that once he's in the cloud chasing you, he will chase you from a long way away. The other gods, you know, you, you basically had to be pretty close, but Kumo... Oh lord, he coming. So he can he can be a little bit of an RNG nightmare. We'll see how he treats us this time. As per usual, we will need two sigils per tower in order to turn them off. And Kumo's area by itself is almost as big as all three of the other gods' areas combined. So we do have a lot more traversal time here than we did previously. Oh. Well, hi there. Alright. Oh no, he's definitely, he's definitely coming. I was gonna try to get out of his way and just, you know, let him focus on whatever he was focused on, but nope. Another use for this visor that we have that we basically never use, if it's snowing heavily or raining like it is now, it helps to turn it on. You know, you can see further if you turn it on. You'll also notice these blue targets, blue talismans that we've never encountered before. They are new to this area and they basically count as a flap. Actually, Pickles, let's start with this one. Since Kumo's not chasing me, I can I can do this puzzle in a more advanta advantageous manner. Typically, Kumo would be like hot on my heels at this point, and we would do this puzzle a little bit differently, since we would have to reset halfway through. So routing for this area has recently changed pretty significantly. Unfortunately, it routed out one of my favorite puzzles. If for some reason something goes wrong and we need an extra sigil because some puzzle doesn't work or something, uh, that will be the first puzzle that I go back to. Far be it for me to say that that's never happened before. Sometimes you gotta do backup puzzles. You're meant to get this on the on the reverse there, like I did. It's possible to get it when you first try, but it's it's very, very rare. Still worth a try though. So yeah, the new routing will take us up this cliff instead of around to an additional puzzle. I think Kumo is trying to say hello, and I don't necessarily appreciate it. That was a good little bit of platforming up that cliff. Oh yeah, he's totally right there. Suddenly I am doing a concern. Oh help. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Now you can see, big castle over there. Dark cloud, as before, that means it's going to be one of the situations where pickles cannot help. I would argue that this is one of the hardest single puzzles in the run. A lot of physics abuse, a lot of not solving it the way you're supposed to. Pickles can't help if you mess up. So hopefully we can get this pretty, pretty well. I 
I'm gonna hop down onto the floor. If Pickles runs into the cloud while he's still carrying me, it's a very slow, like, drop me onto the ground very gradually kind of thing. So our poor little buddy's on fire at the moment. So far, so good. This is probably the hardest one, though. Oof. No likey, but it worked, so we're in here. That's what matters. And we will actually exit out, not because we're being chased by the cloud this time, but because Pickles was on fire. And the game will forget that he's on fire if you exit like that. You'll see a lot of these skeletons around, and the lore is that Kumo, the boss of this area, he's young, but he's really, really strong. You'll see in his boss fight that he is just swole. Uh, so he's a little bit too strong to play with his friends, and he... Those are his friends. Needless to say, playtime did not go the way that they might have hoped. He's just... He likes to wrestle things, and maybe he gets a little bit too... too rambunctious sometimes, so that's why there's all these... Skeletons all over the place. So we are unfreezing these hoops so that we can complete the hoop puzzle by shooting through them. That means we have to do the torches first. Easy peasy. This is one of the most important areas to get skill shots, so hopefully we can at least get the majority of these. Because again, if we if we skill shot in the air, we're not dropping as far in order to charge the arrow. Alright, we need one more sigil and one more tower. I appreciate that Pickles is perching on the, the head of that dead guy. No problem. <laughs> Kumo has been largely absent. I'm gonna regret saying that, I'm sure. But at least so far, this might be the fewest resets I've ever had to Kumo. So one more puzzle. Uh, a lot of runners will maybe choose to do this differently. I know that Azama used to do the bare face puzzle instead of this one. Uh, which is, you know, part of what makes this run great. It's it's very variable. You can definitely make it yours, in a way, and still be competitive with it. So we're going to take this mirror. We talked about glancing shots before. I'm going to actually place this mirror in a location where it can do two things at once. I'm going to place it such that it is, hopefully... That might be a little bit close perfectly in the way for one part of the puzzle and perfectly not in the way for another part of the puzzle, I see that Kumo is showing up. Speak of the devil. Well, let's get as much done as possible. Oh, he left! That's kind. Okay, so we melted that. That did, that did work. So it was, the, the, the mirror was in the way for the part where I had to melt the, the ring, but it was not in the way for the part where I had to shoot backwards and and open the door. 
So we can basically just avoid moving that mirror by placing it in just the right spot. Based on how the game's engine calculates whether the arrow intersects with something when it flies. I'm actually gonna regen my flaps up on this tower. Skill shots are hard. <laughs> Alright, we have the two sigils that we need. We'll turn off this final tower. This will be the final boss fight um, before we reach the end of the game. So, if you are considering donating to a good cause and putting that towards um, petting pickles, you're going to want to get those in. We're going to run out of opportunity to pet pickles. So keep that in mind as we keep going here. Pickles has been doing a fantastic job for us here, so make sure to get those pets in. They're a good burb. Pickles is such a good burb. So here we got Kuma with eight weak points. His chase is definitely one of the harder ones. We got a lot of ground to cover here with Kumo. And I will be playing it, like I said, a little bit safe just to make sure we don't get that camera problem. But Kumo often runs through very tight spaces, which makes it a little bit more problematic as far as keeping the camera under control. I've always wanted to run up that bridge on the side and see where it goes, but now is not the time. Because this is like the actual, this is the world that you explore. It's not like this is some special place that you're running through. Um, so you could, I could totally just like find that bridge in the actual domain that we were just in and see where it goes. But I always forget. <laughs> Alright, so as always, take out half the vulnerabilities, he's gonna get faster. That was a good first little bit of Kumo, though. Kumo's secondary attacks here are, like, unironically hard. I wouldn't say they're quite as hard as Sauro, um, but just kind of because of the terrain, the lumpy terrain, it makes it hard to see where these meteors are gonna land until you're already, like, on top of them. So it's easy to, to take stamina hits here from these fireballs. I couldn't help it, okay? I skirted over the mountain like a speedrunner. Was it risky? Yes, but it's just, it's who I am, okay? chase. Uh, we actually took him down basically right where he's supposed to be. Right by that skeleton in the background. And as we discussed before, Kumo is the strongest of the Eagle Mother's children. 
he is swole. As you can see, he is not going to go down without a fight. Kumo's fight is by far the longest. Uh, barring, you know, the final fight of the game, which is meant to be long and epic. Uh, but he, he is certainly no joke. He's not necessarily hard, just long. And there are certainly good and bad ways to do his fight. But yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't skip leg day. And he's got like a 20 pack, so... A little bit spooky. Bad idea to skip leg day when you got eight legs. I dropped a little early and took that hit so that he would start his little stompy stomp thing here a little faster. As always, do have to be careful not to take too many hits though, or else we'll get ejected from the arena and the fight will start over. Yo, that last little shot there was not expected. So most boss fights, right, would be over by now. We've already done a couple phases, and he's just getting started. Trying to stay away from him so that I don't bait his, uh, his slam attack. Unavoidable here, unfortunately. I didn't have any more room to move, but... And he's still going. By far the longest fight we've had so far. We avoided, thankfully, an additional unnecessary slam. And that's the end of his fight. So let's see who he turns out to be. Also, as a reminder, last call for Pickles Pets. We only have a minute or two more to be able to pet our best burb friend right on the tum tum. It's a little bit deceptive actually because, right, his name is Kumo, which is Japanese for spider, and he looks like a spider. His face looks like a spider. He has seven, or seven, eight legs. He climbs on the wall, you know, by all. By all accounts, he seems like a spider, and yet he's a bear, which is Kuma in Japanese. So I wonder if they were just being a little sneaky, you know? As before, we'll get an additional flap uh, as a reward for defeating this boss. And this castle that we have seen since the beginning of the game is finally accessible. It's the one that leads straight up to the floating isle where the God Slayer is hanging out. Unfortunately, the God Slayer still has that sun sword, which is still way OP, and we have no chance against it. We, we have not, as of yet, figured out what exactly to do about that, so... That's going to be a problem. And the gift that we got from Kumo is 
an uber mega flap, basically. Um, it lets me use all of my flaps all at once to go super, super high. And I will... I will be using it a total of one time. Still fancy, though. When looking at those super mega flaps, how can you not want to pet this burb? That's right. We've got probably 45 more seconds. Get your donations in for any final pickle pets. For good luck for the end of the run. Gets us way up into the air there. We are on our way to the God Slayer, hanging out on this island. So why is the God Slayer even doing what he's doing, right? Like, he's corrupting the gods and trying to become a god himself. Well, he's actually kind of a sympathetic villain. Because he says, you know, I I don't like how confusing it is to figure out what to do because there's all these different gods. So I'm just gonna get rid of them and I'm gonna become, like, one god and then it'll be very obvious, like, this is the one path. He's trying to help people. Once I exit this field, we will no longer be able to pet pickles anymore. Oh, any final donos? It has to be right now. All right, here we go. So this is why we can't pet pickles anymore <laughs> after this point. Unfortunately, he has kind of morphed into a a giant two-headed rage bird. So we're going to be heading through a stealth section, trying to stay away from pickles. It's going to be very intentional about whether I step into the, the shadow, trying not to stumble. There is technically a required stumble when you step into these dark spots, but it is possible to not have that happen. I'm going to be aiming for that. In the meantime, uh, we should still have, now that the now that, uh, pickles pets are over, we should still have some upcoming incentives. And, uh, and other stuff that you can contribute to, so now would be a good time to hear about that. Sorry about that, yeah. Uh, we, our next upcoming incentive is for Castlevania Aria of Sorrow to do two of the final bosses fought on screen at the same time. We're calling it the Bullet Hell incentive, so be sure to get that in. That is currently at $5 out of a possible 25 And just be sure to donate to a great cause here. Oh, we did actually get the stumble coming into here. That should hopefully be alright.
stumble prevents me from moving, so this actually is going to be a bit of a close call. Oh, I am nervous. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> That's all right. I had actually stepped into the darkness, and then uh, after I stepped into it, then I got the stumble. It was it was very odd, but it's cool. Um, the devs have said, you know, they set this final location up to be a little too far for you to make in one try if you're just playing casually, so that's not super unexpected. And the stumble here is fine. We don't actually have that much further to go. It's a very short distance here. Pickles isn't going to catch us again. Alright, so we're going to need some help, right? The God Slayer still has this Sun Sword. Our bow is just completely not good enough. In fact, we don't even have our bow anymore because it got snapped in half when we encountered him. So we need help. We're going to go to this shrine. To all of the gods that we have purified so far. They are now our friends. And they're going to offer a little bit of help. Thankfully. Hi, buddies. So they've got for me the Spirit Bow, the antithesis of the Sun Sword, as its name might suggest. And hopefully with this, we can finally take down the God Slayer. We can actually have a chance against him. So our Spirit Bow, or Moon Bow, was literally crafted to be the opposite of the Sun Sword. That definitely gives us a better chance. All bosses has to include the God Slayer, right? So we've got lots of RNG in this fight about what he chooses to do. That up swipe is definitely good. If he's gonna do a down swipe like this, hopefully he attacks us afterwards, which he does. Lovely. I doubt he'll attack again. That's very, very rare that he attacks straight on two times in a row. Because of that, we don't want to see those downswings whenever possible, because he's likely not going to attack after them. We want to see those. So he's trying to ascend, right? He's trying to actually, like, become a god. He's drawing in power, and I'm trying to stop him. Unfortunately, every time that I try to stop him, he's still making a little bit of progress. I I'm still not strong enough. Also, there's Pickles, who, despite all the belly rubs, is still a big old grump. Pickles zooming at me like this is one of the spookiest parts of this fight. If Pickles hits me like that, enough, I will go flying out of the arena. Just like any other boss, I'll fly out, we'll have to start the phase over again. These phases are very, very long. We do not want to do that. But Pickles is also very hard to dodge. Come on, buddy. Okay, 
So every time he's getting a little bit stronger, it's a little bit harder to stop him from doing this. Don't do it, Pickles. I'm trying to bait him into an attack each time he does this. Thankfully it worked that time. Hopefully we get an upswing, yeah. Very nice. So unfortunately, you know, he's just mostly succeeding, despite our best efforts. However... We were still able to turn on these towers in the background. And they're going to do the same thing that they always do. Which is resonate with the gods and help to purify them. However, I could not get to Pickles in time to finish the purification before the God Slayer ascended. So he's he's a biggie boy now. And Pickles is still still cursed. So my solution, because I need Pickles to help me with the God Slayer, because he's he's the reincarnation of of the Godmother. He has all of this, you know, holy power. I need his help, but I don't have time to purify him myself. So I just took his curse into myself. Unfortunately for me, unlike the rest of the other gods, I don't have towers and sigils and and all that sort of stuff that can purify me. So I kind of doomed myself to save Pickles. It was worth it though, let's be real. So now I'm the one inside the cloud, the big red cloud that's been chasing us the entire time. I'm the corrupted one. And I'm trying to find my way out. I'm trying to find some clarity. And find Pickles. So that we can... We can fight the God Slayer together. Unironically, one of the hardest parts of the speedrun. Because once you face into the cloud, you have no visual cues about where to go. So I'm looking for pickles, I'm looking for my way out. So far this has been actually pretty decent as far as routing for this area is concerned. Fully. We can find Pickles without too much problem here. We want him to be basically right in front of us. Yeah, he is. Good. So Pickles is finally answering me! But our bow, right? Like, everything that we were doing so far, it still wasn't good enough. It still wasn't good enough to stop the God Slayer from ascending. And now he's even more powerful, so surely our bow isn't going to matter now.
We found pickles. And the rest of the gods know that I need some help too. So we're all gonna do this together. They're gonna lend me their power, and we're gonna We're gonna go into this fight as a team. Very sad that we did not get the visual glitch where the God Slayer's spine is just hovering above my head. Alright, lots and lots to think about in this fight. There's fireballs, there's shockwaves, there's the God Slayer himself, there's whether I fully charged my shots. Pickles needs to pick me up or drop me at certain times. Real chaotic stuff going on here. Alright, we did get the double shot there on his hand, which is the fastest iteration of, of uh, being able to do this fight. So we have like an uber-powered Moonbow now, which is fantastic. It does actually stand a chance of, of defeating the God Slayer. Part of the reason why is, as you just saw, if I miss because the God Slayer moves his head, the arrows will actually arc back around and hit him anyway. That one should come back and hit him. Alright, for those who are on the timer, timing is going to stop here shortly, so we should get ready for that. It's going to stop once we deliver the final hit to the God Slayer, which will be right about... <laughs> skill shot. Right about now. Time stops. So that's the pathless all bosses. We've got a little bit of a cutscene here. I did come in uh, pretty high, or I should say pretty low, uh, below estimate, so... Kind of probably could have given more warning <laughs> about that. Sorry. Sorry, right, we're having a little trouble with the time, but I believe it was a 153.05, just about. Ooh. No, it's... It's... We're figuring it out for some reason. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. It. <laughs> it's no problem. Sorry about that. So yeah, as we've seen, you know, the God Slayer was like, I wanted to make this one path that was really easy to follow for everybody. But if you follow what's right for someone else, that doesn't mean that it's right for you. And that's why this game is called The Pathless. You have to find your own path. There is no one right answer. So we've, we've saved the world from the God Slayer. We have defeated all of the bosses in the game. This is all the bosses. Even though there's still a ton more to do in this game that you didn't get the chance to see. Uh, you know, we, we did actually defeat all of the bosses. So that much is complete. We're still cursed. Which is bad. <laughs> but there are alternate endings to this game if you do different stuff. So... You still have plenty to discover on your own if you would like to try this game for yourself. And Pickles, don't forget, is the reincarnation of the mother bird who was the mother of all the gods who were on this island. So Pickles is going to go out. He's going to start the world anew. 
and make it a good and happy place. <laughs>